Hi, DJ here and welcome to the channel. Today we head back to a celebration and meet a guy with so many parts in two original trilogy movies that he forgets some of them, but I've researched them out for us mega fans. And he shares how they tricked Vader actor Dave Prowse. And hang until the end as he also talks about the Mark Hamill incident. And if you feel like we're worthy, please consider subscribing and punching that like button. We're here with Richard Bonehill, who played a myriad of characters in Empire and Jedi. Can you even remember where to start and all the characters you played? I have to look them up on a list before I come to a convention, basically. Um, and the reason that I played a lot of characters is that I was young and fit, and I fitted the costume had nothing to do with talent whatsoever, and they knew they, they could shoot me and blow me up. In actual fact, Richard does forget some of his characters, as he's done so many of them. For The Empire Strikes Back, he played a stormtrooper and a snowtrooper. Plus, as per these photos of Richard in costume and showing his face, he also played the Hoth Rebel named Palo Torsion, and possibly a TIE fighter pilot too, as he has signed such pictures. So he donned the TIE costume probably in either Ep 5 or Ep 6. For Revenge of the Jedi, he played a Mon Calamari. He helped with Riyis, possibly in a deleted scene or studio shoot, and Nine Numb. Nine was mostly a two-person job, so I found these freestanding pics of Nine just standing there in the background. Coming up, Richard explains them a bit better. Plus, in research, I uncovered him here in this deleted scene. He's in the Falcon as a rebel. Not to be confused with these guys, General Aaron Kraken and one of our pals, Trevor Butterfield, in the Falcon 2 and firing the gun turrets. Wikipedia also has him listed as an A-Wing pilot. And the closest I could find is this image. And finally, he played Mosep Benid, seen here in Jubba's Palace. So my count is that Richard Bonehill played a whopping 10 characters. So you got very lucky, really, in a way, because once you're a part of Star Wars, even as one character, you've got it made for life, haven't you? Well, it seems to be now, but we never realised. I mean, at the time, it was just another job. That was it. And we thought it would just be an American sci-fi film that uh, would be shown and forgotten about. If you'd have told me that 30 years later I'd be standing talking to you, I would have said you were crazy. What are some of the uh, favourite characters that you recall that you, you did play? I think um, obviously the Snowtrooper and the Stormtrooper. The Stormtrooper has become an iconic figure now. And it's funny because we started off as the bad guys and now we're the good guys. So uh, it's really good. Some of the other work with uh, playing Num9, part of it, uh, along with Mike Quinn, uh, and re-years were with latex masks and they were very uncomfortable um, but um, it was a job and you got paid for it. Was re-years a one-person gig or did it need multiple people to work things? Um, it depended because a lot of the characters had an animatronic head which was a close-up head where the eyes and moved. The one I played was just a full-length thing so it was just me. Now there's also a rather fascinating story about you having to or you and your squad of stormtroopers having to keep Dave Prowse away from set something about a secret tell us about that I'm not sure if I'm ashamed of this or not um, on the day the uh, Roy Buttons who was the second assistant director came and got there were about four or five of us and they said I want you to go and do a, a still shoot with the cameraman with Dave Prowse and you've got to keep him away from the stage for at least three hours. So you have to do everything wrong. You have to drop your guns, bits of armor fall off. Um, the cameraman was in on it. He knew what was going on. So we did it. And poor Dave must have thought we were all idiots. As soon as we came to take a shot, they just dropped a gun on his foot. Or, and the reason was they wanted to keep Dave away from the stage where they were taking the helmet off of Darth Vader to reveal another actor. But they paid us money for that. <laughs> and that's pretty much risky business, dropping your blaster on Darth Vader's foot. Yeah, but stormtroopers are tough, and he couldn't tell which one it was because I had my helmet on. 
So to this very day, well, you know, it's coming out now, but, yeah, you sort of had to be a bit duplicitous with old Dave Prowse there. I think you're absolutely right. I'm not sure if I'm happy about it now, but we were doing what we were told, basically. Any other favourite memories from the two films you were on? I think um, one of the strangest things is I'm signing here, signing autographs. Mark Hamill is signing autographs. One day I was standing on the... And obviously when you work on a film for six weeks, you get to know the, the artist. And um, I was standing on the set one day as a stormtrooper. And Mark Hamill rushes on and he said, Richard Bonehill. And so all the stormtroopers had to take their helmets off. And uh, the assistant said, that's Richard. And he came up and he was a fan of Eagle Comics. And I'd done some modelling for a, a photo story in Eagle Comics. So he asked for my autograph. <laughs> so I signed his comic for him. Well, that's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. Terrific memories of Star Wars, huh? Really good. Um, at this convention, I've met Nick Gillard, uh, who I started in show business with 30 years ago. He was the stunt coordinator for the last three films. We used to ride, trick ride in the circus together in about 1800. <laughs> Classic. Richard Bonehill, very lovely to catch up with you and we look forward to chatting to you again sometime. Thank you very much. Richard was also a medal and trophy winning master swordsman, appearing in many plays and movies. May Richard Bonehill rest in peace. Thanks for visiting and catch so much more right here on Star Wars 100 Interviews. Catch you soon.